when you get in your mid-30s, around your 40s, somewhere in there, a lot of y'all will see that life kind of loses its luster. The things that you used to be in, the things that excited you, the things that you were into, like going to the clubs and chasing women and I mean you're just your testosterone is like a wild bear in heat you're just ready to tear something up I know for me I used to be a nutball a straight nutball and, and when I say nutball I mean hyper I was always trying to please people and act funny for people and do all this crazy stuff and like, you know, I ain't going to say everything I did. I was going to name some examples, but yeah, I was just like, I, I'm telling you, if you knew the people that I used to hang with and be with, they would tell you, yeah, Nate used to be a nut. Nate used to, you know, I was the one that they called when they were having parties and stuff, this is the guy that I used to be, y'all. I used to be the one that when they were having a party or a get-together or anything, they would call me and say, Nate, we need you here because this is boring. We need you to bring this thing to life or to be there to act like a nutball and do all this stuff. And I used to have that in me a lot a lot a lot a lot and in a way I still kind of wish that I was like that in a way but but not because if I was if I did have that same type of energy I would be a lot more relaxed and calm and use it I would reserve the energy for things that I would do instead of what I did back then and not saying that I would want to be like I was because I mean I was pretty I was pretty stupid I mean I still knew I still knew a lot of stuff I was just somebody that did not care what people thought like at all like I mean I would do anything to impress someone or I would do anything to you know be the one that the girl wanted to get with and all this and let me tell you something it never worked I mean sometimes I did uh, but I'm not proud of my um, my report card from the past it's like I did some dumb shit sexually and with other things and with you know, it's just like the, the, the shit that you do when you're a teenager and stuff. You know, we all go through that phase and we all do dumb things. And then we get older and realize, you know, what I was doing. But that doesn't mean not to live your life and stuff. But what I'm saying is I'm out here walking on a Friday night. It's 1030 at night. And look at all these cars going by me. It's it's crowded out here. And you know what all these people are doing. And it's cool that they're doing that but I'm like you got that they got that like I if I would go to a club and I would go there with somebody I don't know if I would go or not I really don't know I can't say I would and I can't say I wouldn't probably not because it's just not my scene anymore but if I would I might drink a couple drinks get a little buzz and then I'm just going to be sitting there listening to others small talk the night away. And listen, I don't have a problem with other people. If other people want to small talk and they don't get me involved with all the dumb, stupid lingo, I don't care how much they talk. If they're staying busy and they're leaving me alone and they're not bothering me, I don't care what they do. I'm I'm glad when people do talk because I, I it's awkward being in a room that's silent with other people anyway, even though it shouldn't be awkward. It is awkward because of what this condition thing's doing, because what the conditioned mind does. It always says, oh, it's, it's too silent in here. Somebody talk, somebody say something, this is awkward. And then you're swallowing and you're 
getting kind of an anxiety attack where you're like, oh, this person's thinking this of me. Yeah, that guy over there, yeah, he's saying something or he's looking my way. And it's like, I used to handle that situation so much differently. You know, I would, I wanted to go to the club and I wanted to be the one there that was getting into it and getting a, a buzz. And, and look, I would, like I said, I'd be the guy sitting there and if a woman wants to come up to me there, then I will let her do that because I am not approaching any women anymore. And I know people go, this is what, this is what the average Joe will say. Something like, oh, so what? You're gay? You don't like women. Man, you don't like doing anything. What's wrong with you? And then they say all this stuff. And it's like, you don't understand. I'm so past that type of mentality and that type of thinking with women and being in clubs and all that stuff. And I'm not saying I wouldn't take a woman home and have sex. I'm not saying that I won't have sex with a woman. If a woman was, you know, it was mutual and we, we had chemistry going on and she wants to have a time with me and I want to have a time with her, then let's get it on. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a man. I love women. But what I'm saying is, you are not going to see me chasing women. That's just never going to happen. And this whole thing with chasing women, it is another form of the conformity. And most men don't even realize this. They don't even understand that what they are doing when they are chasing, that is not natural to chase. It's natural to do what you're doing and to be yourself. And then the woman will come to you because you are who you are you don't chase women women do not like that shit i'm telling every man out there listen to what i am saying i'm not no coaching date i'm not none of that i'm just regular old nate but i know i've been around so many women and i heard what they said and i listened and i sat with them i've been around them i've slept in the same rooms with them while they were having sex with other people. I mean, I, I did it all. You know, I lived that life. I was in many different situations because I, I was always going different places. You know what I'm saying? I was always looking for sex. I was always looking for the person that had the liquor or the weed, or the party going on, or some get together going on, some swimming pool party, whatever it was, going wherever the action was, and I know how this is, and it's like, listen, now I'm not going to lie to you, this is me being absolutely honest, because you know by now, I don't bullshit on my channel, maybe if I was, I take one medication that I take because I have to take it for myself. I take one medication and that kind of dulls my testosterone and my sex drive and other things with my brain. Maybe if I was off of them, my sex drive, it would come back and I would be into that kind of stuff a little more. But I still wouldn't want to go do all the things I'm talking about like I used to. There's just, there's just no way. It wouldn't happen because I've already kind of died to all this stuff. This is why I've been telling everybody this lately because a lot of us, I think, are dead to a lot of this stuff. And we think that we have to get back to that. We think that we have to shooting star i see i see them out here a lot lately we think that we have to go back to the things that we left or to somehow be a part of what we used to be a part of and if you didn't fit in then you're not going to fit in now if if you didn't if you somehow didn't get something for yourself then it's not going to happen now, but the thing is though, you learn a lot of things from back then and that can help you in certain situations where 
you've already did it. You've been there and done it, and it, you've experienced it so many times. So it's kind of like you adapt to the situations. You become like a chameleon. That's how I feel. I feel like a chameleon. I feel like I can, but I'm not tricking people, you see? And I'm not, I'm not with my tongue and, you know, doing all these crazy things. You know, if I turn pink, I'm turning pink for a reason because I see a watermelon and I know a watermelon's healthy, so I'm gonna turn pink or red. You know, I don't, it's like, I can adapt to the situation and I am, I'm like a chameleon. I know how to fit in. I know how to be a part of more than anybody. I know how to conform and fit in and do what everybody else is doing and get people to love me in that kind of way. But that's just not how I that's not what I'm into anymore. It's like when you start getting older, you just don't have that same energy that you had. And you know, you're kind of forcing yourself. You're kind of, you're, you're trying to trick your brain into believing that I can still do this. You know what I'm saying? And I know if there's any old heads on here, if there's any people that are 40 and above, or even guys in their 20s. I mean, I, even in my 20s, I wasn't into it. You know, ever since I went into a faith-based program in 2009 to 2010 for a year and three months, and that's another reason why I have this Jesus thing going on. Because maybe I do have some kind of religious trauma. Maybe, maybe, you know, this is all some delusion in my head or whatever, but I know there's a part of my brain. This is what I wanted to tell all y'all. There's a part of my brain somewhere within this whole brain that's scattered all over the place that the Jesus, you, you know, Jesus, that's something that I go to in prayer because that's my personal thing that I do because I don't know where else to go. I don't know where else to bring my own burdens. I don't know where else to do any of this stuff. Nothing else works. And I know when I bow my head or I close my eyes or I just surrender and I go, you know, and I pray. And, and what I do is I say, in the name of the, in the name of you, Father, Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit. That's what I do. I don't care if it's real or not. I don't care if it's if it's whatever. If it's religious, people want to call it religious or anything. I don't I don't have these rituals that I do. I just I pray when things are going very badly and then I pray. Here's the key element. I pray for things that I have to remind myself to be thankful and grateful for because when I lost sight of that and I stopped praying for what I'm grateful and thankful for everything went to hell everything went to shit again when I stopped being thankful and I stopped having gratitude and I stopped surrendering and saying look I can't do this I, I can't my this mental storm has got to go and I'm laying it down at the feet of the cross and that's where Jesus comes in for me you know I'm not saying that anybody else has to believe that I'm not forcing that on any of y'all out there I would never force anything on any of y'all out there and and everybody should know me by now that I'm not like that you know I don't Listen, I know that I'm a contradiction and I'm a hypocrisy in and of myself, but I do not bullshit people. I will tell you when I'm contradicting myself or being a hypocrite. And maybe I do have some type of religious trauma that is somewhere in my mind and I have to fulfill that thing. Maybe my psyche has heard that so many times and, and because I grew up on this too. I went to a Christian school from K-5 to 4th grade and then I went to a secular school, you know, and 
that's how it happened. And that's, that's what I was dealt. And that's how my family was. Some of you might not have grown up in religious, well, families that read the Bible or take their kids to, uh, a faith-based school. But I was a part of that my whole life. And then there was a time in 2007, somewhere around there, where I started questioning everything and see the first stage that I went through was I went to the Bible first. And then I got into this like Jesus and faith stage, like believing in God and, and praying and stuff. And then I went away for a year and three months and I heard that stuff every day for a year and three months. Every single day I was in the Bible. And listen, I did get some stuff from the Bible. I did get some stuff from that doctrine. But that doesn't mean that I religiously go by it. Do you, you understand what I mean? I mean, this is, this is why I say it's hard for people that have not grown up with religion or grown up with uh, reading that Jesus is the Son of God and He died on the cross for you and to take your burdens to Him, all of you who are heavy laden. This is the stuff that I'm used to hearing as a kid and all that stuff back then. But now, all this stuff from back then is irrelevant. It's just something that I do personally because my psyche can't go without it, if that makes sense to all everybody out there. And I don't need to explain myself. I just want everybody to understand because I don't like leaving people in the dark. You know, I'll leave you in the shade, but I'm not going to leave you in that deep, dark rabbit hole like a, a lot of other people will. Because a lot of other people... They do not give a rat's ass what anybody thinks. They don't even care to tell any of you out there this kind of stuff. That's why I said, and this is not me boasting yet again, but you're never going to find a channel like this. You're never going to find somebody that is being absolutely brutally honest with you. You're not going to find somebody that just spews their guts out and tells you everything they've been through and the things that they're going through and why I pray to Jesus. My psyche is so set up for some of these things. You can't, listen, there is a study on this. There is a study on this. It's facts. People that grew up with Christianity or religion or learning about Jesus or any type of religion or anything, you can't just get that stuff out of your mind. You can't just say, okay, I don't want to think about this. I, I don't ever want any of this in my memory again. It's gone and I'm getting rid of it. It doesn't work like that. Your brain stores these memories and these remembrances. And I don't know the right word, but it stores that stuff there and I'm telling people right now, I can be wrong. This is what none of us want to do. And this is what I wanted to name this video. And this is what I was really going for at the beginning. I don't know how I started talking about whatever I was talking about. But it's like none of us can admit that we can be wrong. And this is another big problem that we have is that everybody thinks that they're right everybody thinks that they have the right god everybody thinks that there there is something after this that they think is after this excuse me everybody is on this thing where i'm right all the time because it's me and i have an opinion and that is look that is the furthest thing from being a rational, logical thinker. That is the furthest thing from you using your thoughts and using your mind. You know, I don't want to say the way it should be, but most people don't even think of thinking this way. It doesn't even come across their mind to think like this. And look, when I, when I say the things that I've been saying lately, 
I am not saying that I am above any of y'all out there. I am not saying, like I say, I already know everything. I've already been there. I've already done it. There's nothing you can tell me. That doesn't mean that you can't, you know, write a comment or do whatever it is you do. That doesn't mean it's, I'm not like this, uh, this strict father figure or this like guy that is just waiting for you to mess up waiting to judge you waiting to strike you down and like if you do one bad thing i'm going to get on you and do a topic on this and all this i'm not that kind of guy man i am i'm open and i'm honest and i'm willing to be genuine with people and and, you know it's like the more that i look around and the things that i hear people say a lot of it turns me off but that doesn't mean that people still can't say what they want to say. I'm talking about all over the internet. I'm not just talking about my channel. I'm talking about all over the internet because I see social media and these other outlets. It's kind of like drinking poison, if you ask me. It's kind of like self-implosion. It's kind of like us not even being who we are. You know, it's just, it's the daily facade. You know, it's not the daily news or the the daily the daily the daily of the day no it's like the daily hold on okay i got my mask on all right hi you know i got my facade on i got my persona going you know it's like and anytime i seem like i'm giving a pep talk or it seems like i'm preaching or it seems like I'm doing something that I'm probably not with how I'm discerning this. I'm telling you, things are not as they seem. This is what all of these things mean to me. Things are not as they seem. When I talk to you, I do these things because I actually care that the human condition is the way that it is, but I know that I can't do anything about it. And in some weird way, in some weird way, I am for and I am not for everything. I am for the light and I am for some dark. I am for the positive and I am for some negative. I am for hot and cold. I am for uh, the people that may be religious and I'm not for those people. It's so strange how to get this across to people where my headspace is at and how I think nowadays. It's, it's, you know, it's kind of like, say that you're somebody that has never experienced what I'm talking about, or you never been through any of this, and, and you're like, it's kind of like a blind man trying to see for the first time. A lot of people just ain't going to get it. And that's cool. You don't have to get it. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to understand every little minuscule thing. This is what we're taught. And this is what we're kind of conditioned to do is to think that we need to be perfect. Or we need to fit in. Or we need to, need to, need to. What's up, bro? And, all right, man. And we just keep doing this. Like, we think that we need to do more. We need to accomplish more. We need to be something more. We need to act like we're somebody more. We need to put on the facade more. We need to attempt to fix things more. It's like, this is why I say, quit trying. Stop trying. Give up. Surrender. Surrender to something other than yourself. Because look at the hell that goes on. Just look at the hell that goes on when you make it about you and you're by yourself. And then everybody's saying, I'm lonely. I hate life. I want to commit suicide. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go with this. Surrender. Give up. Surrender to something. Surrender to the universe if you have to. Surrender unto yourself if you don't think that there's a God or a creator or Jesus or anything. 
surrender and just get down and say, look, I, I, I give up on this. I, I'm, uh, I just, I'm done. And I give myself up. And then you will start wanting to serve others instead of just indulging in yourself and making it about you all the time. And even though I talk about me, I say you because I've already self-reflected this back onto myself so much that I say you all the time. But when I say you, it's actually me saying me back onto myself. You understand? And I'm almost, like I said in my other video, I'm almost sacrificing myself to show myself and who I really am. I'm exposing the light and the dark. I'm exposing the fake positivity and the bullcrap negativity. I'm exposing my life and everything in it because this world's already dead to me. But that doesn't mean that I can't be alive right now. And that's how I feel. I feel like this is already dead and gone. And like Albert Camus said, uh, he said something about knowing that life is absurd. That's the beginning. You know, knowing that life is, uh, thinking that life is absurd. Something with, when, when you know that life is absurd, it can't be the end, but only the beginning. And once you realize this is so absurd, this is so repetitive, this is, this is like, what is going on here? Why this? Why that? Where am I going? Why do I feel this way? Because you haven't got out of yourself yet. You haven't, you haven't self-reflected on yourself enough. You haven't, see, you project but you haven't took those projections and put them back onto yourself enough, in my honest view for myself. And, and once you understand yourself and you know everything and you understand, then that's when you go, look, it's not even about me anymore. It's not even about me. It's about doing this so that other people can hear it, so that other people can discern just simple little easy things you, you see what I mean it's not a big deal it's nothing to take too serious but it's something to take serious at first and then later on you say well this is so absurd why am I taking it serious let me lighten up the burden here on myself let me surrender and get and let it go and me where I take that I take that to prayer and I lay it, I lay me down on the cross of Jesus as my surrender and as saying I give my own self to the sacrifice which showed me to sacrifice my own self. See this? It's so hard to understand when you haven't read the book of the Bible itself and interpreted it for what it was. You see, if you haven't read the doctrine, then you're not going to know what I mean. And I read the doctrine and I'm just saying, I'm taking the metaphors and the parables from that. It's not religion. It's metaphors and parables, y'all. And this is what I want y'all to understand. All right. So I'm going to end the video here. My arm's killing me. Um, when the empire strikes back, like that movie, the empire strikes back. Don't strike back. Give up. Surrender. Throw in the white towel and say, I lost. And then when you lose with dignity and you lose with some honor and you bury yourself in the ground and say, I'm dead to this. That's when you can just let it go and just do this. Doesn't mean you're better or worse. It doesn't mean anything. It's all absurd anyway. But at least you can let go and move on and just say, let me do something. Let me do something I like or something I enjoy. Or let me uh, go talk to somebody that I haven't talked to for a while. And if they did me dirty, say, hey, look, it's okay you did me dirty. I forgive you. I forgive you and I love you metaphorically. I forgive you and it's all right. Let's go get some watermelon down the street. Let's go buy some watermelon and, and get some, uh, I don't know, Gatorade and take a walk at the park. You know, 
it's like everybody is yearning and dying for human interaction so you have to go and get that yourself it's not just going to come to you that's not how it works brothers and sisters out there it does not work like that it's not just going to come to you if you really are in need of that then you have to admit that that you're maybe in denial of how, where you're at and what you're going through because i know i'm always in denial of stuff you know but but actually i'm in denial but i'm not in denial i'm telling y'all what it really is but when i start getting in my ruts again i start saying oh no i'm I can do this. Everything's fine. And see, that's when I say that I can do it myself and I got this. That's the biggest mistake. And that's why I surrender. And I, I surrender myself unto something because it helps me to let it go. It helps me to lay me down so I don't have to fight and struggle and try so hard. You see what I'm saying here, y'all? So if you if you understand or you don't understand, it's fine. At least you're listening to this. At least you're listening. You know, it's all absurd anyway. In the end, it doesn't even matter. Chester Bennington, watch him with his depression. He can teach you a lot too with the things he said. You know, so it is what it is and that's what it is. So take care of yourselves and keep doing whatever you got to do. That's all you can do while you're here. SBN Resonate, I'm out. Later, y'all. When the Empire strikes, well, it's not showing it, but don't strike back. Surrender and lose with dignity.